starting a um, a, a camp in um, peace camp for uh, homeless youth for the most part, and there's some uh, older homeless people going to join in with it as well. But because the kids have had their tents wrecked and stuff like that in the creek valley, in the creek ravine, and in the river valley. Well, we're as illegal in this park as they are down in the in the river valley. So we might as well be in the open. If the police want to stomp or slash their tents, they can do it right here in front of everyone. How many campers are you expecting? Uh, probably around 10 today, but we're going to build up to 30 over the next few days. And um, and uh, we because actually it's just a building thing. Like most of the young people know about it. There's a little bit of retin reticence in the um, in the community because. A lot of the kids have like warrants for stupid things, survival things, like maybe dealing a bit of drugs to make that extra 10 bucks or um, uh, stealing food or stealing tampons, stuff like this. And a lot of them got so many of those, they spent time in jail for the dumbest crimes. Like no suburban kid would ever do time for anything like that. But these kids do and it builds up and then they end up doing jail time. when. You know, um, a lot of them are First Nations, a lot of them are Métis, and, um, a lot, and so many of them have been through the, um, through the foster care system. And I don't want to completely diss the foster care system because uh, there's a percentage of it that's 100% necessary. Yes, children need to be out of certain things. But what I'm seeing is kids that were taken away from single moms because the single mom couldn't afford to get them the stuff that they needed. So instead of giving the single mom money, they take her kid and give the money to foster parents, many of whom are awful human beings that are doing it just for the extra money. Um, and many aren't great. So hats off to the good foster parents, but the horror stories I've heard over the last year from uh, some of some of these young women and young men. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's truly disgusting, it's horrifying. I have children myself, and my thing is to treat them all um, like I would hope my my daughter or son uh, would be treated if they were in the same, if they mm -hmm. were in the same position. Now how, they, did, how did you get involved in, in, in doing this kind of street outreach stuff? Well, actually, I did it secretly for a lot of years. Um, and uh, when lockdown happened, the bathrooms were locked up and the food, the places where people would get food and water and things like that were closed. So I I had to multiply my actions. Instead of one bag with a few insurers and granola bars in it, I had to bring out um, uh, menstrual products. I had to bring out insurer. I had to bring out full meals. I had to make sure everybody at least got a granola bar every day brought out hand sanitizer, which the police took away from a lot of them, saying that uh, uh, saying that the people were going to drink it. I know almost all the unhoused people in the neighborhood, and I just didn't give it to the ones that are going to drink it. I just sprayed their hands myself. But um, yeah, we were out trying to save lives, and the police were just interfering with that. Like, why on God's green earth would they do that when there's no bathrooms around? And, and what has happened since uh, supports like the Expo Center have closed? Oh, it's been it, it's been uh, unreal. Like the problem in our the problems in our neighborhood were fairly chilled when the uh, Expo Center and Kinsmen were doing their thing. As soon as those closed, uh, the White Ave neighborhood got flooded with a lot of people, and a lot of people we don't know and recognize in this neighborhood. They came up here partly because there's some places with resources. There's a bathroom up here and stuff like that, but um, yeah, some of them came here selling shitty drugs. Like most of the drugs uh, I went out and bought so that I could test for fentanyl uh, were from people we've never seen in the neighborhood before. Like they are not supposed to be selling down in the neighborhood. No heroin, no fentanyl. It's not a thing around White Avenue, but these guys are bringing it and they're mixing every other drug with it. So the kids are doing a little bit of pimp, which is meth. And um, somebody's throwing a bunch of fentanyl or car fentanyl in it. It's like, it doesn't make any sense as far as a drug goes, but it's the way it is. And uh, so every drug I bought uh, tested positive for fentanyl. That's cocaine, that's um, the ecstasy type of party drugs, which are never ecstasy anymore. Uh, cocaine, crack, the meth, had, all of it had that in it. And the fentanyl stuff I bought was fentanyl. And, and so, 
I can do that. The police can't. But uh, all of the people that I bought from were not regulars in the neighborhood. What do you hope is going to come out of this? Uh, some recognition from the city, and it already happened. They sent out some emissaries. We we're talking to them, and we want to um, uh, maybe uh, get the attention of the police in the neighborhood. There's some people that I mean, they're still cops, but they're they're pretty decent people, and they care about this too. They care about the police violence and stuff that they don't see or hear about, right? Because there's a culture of silence in the uh, in, in all police departments. So, um, yeah, that, that's about it. We want to get the attention of the police, the public, and the city. Uh, hopefully the province too, but our province is run by complete fucking morons at the moment, so um, we can't count on that. Like, Jason Kenney has no compassion for, um, for any of these people, so... Fuck him. We'll go on without him. That's what we do. That's why we started doing this stuff at lockdown. They weren't doing it. They weren't living up to their like obligation to save the most vulnerable, vulnerable people. So like seriously, they go to hell. Like unless they want to step up and do something, which would be nice. But we're not counting on it anymore. These people are. Um, they are uncompassionate people. That's like the bottom. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to just add? Uh, no, that's about it. We need houses. We need um, we need safe supply. We need safe injection sites, and um, we need to have the test kits that we can use to test for fentanyl. I'm all out of them now. That means that we're going to have at least one person die and a few overdoses next week. So I'm out of test kits. Maybe the city wants to buy us some and save. You know, one life would be worth a thousand test kits or I mean, ten thousand test kits. Thank you.